make no mistake about it, the forces against the BBI are coming down hard. <laughs> they are coming down very hard against the BBI. And they are very emotional about it. Now, of course we should all be very grateful for the democratic space we enjoy in Kenya. You can even call a press conference and insult the president for no good reason. Try and do that in neighboring Tanzania. <laughs> anyway, have you noticed something off? Something very strange about this anti-BBI crusaders and the crusade itself? There are these two people I know who are very good friends. Indeed, they have always been very good friends. But right now, they are not on talking terms. I shared this on our Telegram page. Indeed, one of them assassinating the other <laughs> is not out of question. And you know what the problem is? I can assure you, nobody ate anybody's mbuzi, as we put it in Kenya. The problem is the BBI. Can you believe it? These two usually level-headed Kenyans lost it and they almost ended up physically fighting. Reason? One of them firmly supports the BBI and the other one firmly opposes the BBI. Kwani ka spirit ko US imengia Kenya? Hehehe! A spirit of hatred. If you don't support me, if you don't support my candidate, if you don't support my political views, then we cannot be friends. We must be enemies. I, to be honest, I just don't understand this thing. Anyway, my reason for bringing that up is the fact that the anti-BBI crusaders if I can call them that, are behaving very strangely, very emotionally. In my view, people in civil society are supposed to set an example for politicians. They are supposed to show politicians this is how you're supposed to behave. This is how you're supposed to play your politics. But then recently, I was utterly shocked as a member of the civil society, someone who I've always respected, someone I've always considered a colleague in this noble fight for a better Kenya, <laughs> spoke like a politician. Indeed, he was flanked by politicians. And so maybe it rubbed off. I don't know. But he spoke like a politician, insulting, abusive language personal attacks at the president. I don't hold brief for the president, but surely if your issue is the BBI and the process of the BBI, why don't you stick to that? Ama, you will not get your point across unless and until you use abusive, insulting language and make personal attacks on people. <laughs> when you do that, you just lose me. Yeah, it doesn't matter where in the world we're talking about. Whether it's the US or whether it's Kenya. You just lose me. You know, the most interesting thing about this anti-BBI campaign is that it's devoid of strong points. It's devoid of any debate. And it's full of insulting, threatening language. In fact, what the anti-BBI people are telling us is that if the BBI is passed, ah, yeah, 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 Kenya Kwisha. Hey, now is that true? What they are telling us is that President Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga have a very sinister hidden motive yeah, to pass the BBI. For their own selfish gain. Okay, we've heard you. 
but now can you elaborate can you tell us exactly what this sinister motive is and i'm willing to wait until you finish with the insults yeah and then you start talking points you know when you take that kind of approach you will not succeed politically yeah because you're playing the game of politicians with huge support bases right across the country we are accustomed to these politicians talking in abusive language and we have been saying for a long time that they should change yeah the way they approach their politics but now you, you want to come and play their game and you don't have any political base <laughs> to speak of do you think you're going to win i say that this is very sad because there are some solid points against the bbi that people can put forward and people listen and maybe they'll be able to achieve the objective for instance one very strong point of hard is that the bbi the main objective is to enable president huru kinyata to extend his term in office not as president but maybe in another powerful position in government now when you unleash such a point you have my attention and indeed you have my support now all you need to do is to convince me how exactly the president is going to do this because the last time i checked to get a powerful political position in kenya you need to be elected by very many people in kenya so what are these people telling us that voters in kenya are idiots actually if we are to be brutally honest that is precisely what some people are saying they are saying that the kenyan voter cannot be trusted and therefore they have to legislate make sure yeah that the laws will protect the kenyan voter from themselves and if they don't do that ah yeah 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 the kenyan voter can do anything they can give president huru kinyata <laughs> a life premiership or a life presidency yes this is what they're saying well after thanking you for insulting the intelligence of the typical kenyan voter i would like to plead yeah to be shown what in the bbi is so terrible that people have to use insulting language please point me to what exactly in the bbi is so dangerous so fatal that if this bbi thing passes it will be the end of kenya and the end of kenya's 2010 constitution please show me because clearly i have missed something and this thing i've missed is very big but let me tell you what is most disturbing as far as i'm concerned what is very very disturbing to me is the fact that i have noticed tell tell signs that people are behaving the way they are behaving because they have received money and while we are there can i ask how is the anti bbi camp financing its campaigns because it seems to be very very well financed where is the money coming from i believe kenyans have a right to know let me tell you about something that happened to me just a few weeks ago i discovered that a certain servant of god who has been around for years and who have been following for years and who have always thought when things are very bad in Kenya at least so and so is there to stand in the gap for the country and pray for Kenya i was utterly shocked the other day when somebody presented to me irrefutable evidence that this well respected servant of god is not the person i thought they were i'm telling you i was flawed completely 
Then I remembered the season we are in. We are in the season of deception. Don't trust anybody. Any respectable person can be corrupted by money. Indeed, every man has their price and every woman too. And so it should not surprise us if somebody was firmly in support of the BBI just the other day is now firmly against it. it shouldn't surprise anybody. But my dear fellow Kenyans, let us be careful. Let us be very careful in this season of deception. And as I said in my previous recording, look at somebody's past. What have they done in their past? Before you even listen to them or start following them, let alone take their money to make noise against something that will benefit Kenyans. My view. And you're welcome to yours. You're very welcome to your own contrary view. Yeah, but let's leave out the insulting language. Give me solid points. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekocha.